Hey everybody, how's everybody doing today? Welcome back to the Joy of Living. So on this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show everybody how to do my dragonfly and my stingray loops. Now, if you remember back in episode four on making the grab snares, in that episode, I showed everybody how to make my butterfly loops, as you can see here. So in this video, we're gonna focus on the dragonfly loops and my stingray loops. Now, I have another video in the near future that's gonna show you three more loop design, okay? I have three more, I have a total of six. The other style is the wind meal it's the wasp as well as the hybrid so i hope you enjoy the video and i hope you get something out of this today now the first loop that we're going to focus on right now will be the dragonfly loops okay so if you recall the dragonfly loops are the loops that stand up and spread out now this is one of the loops i created when i decided to do a, a vertical rather than a horizontal um, because i figured that in some uh, conditions the vertical loops works better than the horizontal loops. The snare that we're going to use today is the Twinkie snare. So the, remember, this is my Twinkie snare right here. Um, and make sure you watch my other videos get to get up to this point to know how to do your lines correctly for your loops. Now, when this is ready to go, um, in the other video, when I showed you how to do the butterfly loops, remember first at the tip right here, you bend it 90 degrees in order to get this right here. And then once you finish on the butterfly loops, remember how I told you guys to bend it with the curve. Remember that? Bend it with the curve in order to get your butterfly loops. Okay. Now, in this video, in order to get your dragonfly loops, you don't bend it with the curve at the end. So this step is what's different compared to the butterfly loop step. At this step right here, instead of bending it with the curve, what you're going to do is you're going to bend it at another 90 degree angle, just like you did with the tip of your uh, loop. So when you stick it in, go ahead and stick in your sleeve, okay? And then with this, roughly about an inch, you're going to bend a 90 degree angle, just like you did to get that first loop right here, okay? And once you do that, go ahead and pinch it. And this is what you get, okay? See how it's bent at a 90 degree? Now that's what you want. Now, once you get that and you get it ready to go, I'm going to position it on the snare, the same location that I did for the butterfly loops. Now, when it is bent at a 90 degree angle, let me see if I can get a good view up close here for everybody. So what you want to do is you're going to stick it in and get some pliers to help you out. All right, stick it through. You're going to go ahead and stick it into the sleeve. So the same thing as your butterfly loops, you want to push your sleeve all the way in as close to the cage as possible. So get a real tight snug. Remember, pliers, you're holding the snare down, guys. You're grabbing the outside of the uh, sleeve and you're pulling it in separate direction to get that sleeve closer to the cage. And then you crimp down just a little bit. Okay. And then once you do that, you cut the side. And then there you go. That's your first dragonfly loop. Now, the reason why I bend at a 90 degree angle right here. So after, you know, remember how I looped it and then I bent it at a 90 degree angle instead of bending it with the curve and then stick it in. It's because I believe that by bending it at a 90 degree angle rather than bending it this way, that will allow your loop to stay up a little bit better 
Otherwise, if I bend it this way and then I loop it on to the cage, it's going to end up tipping over like this. That's what's going to happen after so many uses. Now, with this, even after so many uses, it will still stand upright because I did that crimp. Now, again, I'm going to rephrase that, okay, because this is a very important step. I'm going to rephrase that. Instead of bending it with the curve, I bend it 90 degree. And that's very important because by bending it 90 degree, the loop will stand up a lot longer over time than it would if you have bent it with the curve. Because if you bend it with the curve, then you stick it in, that loop is going to lean and it's not going to work the way you want it to. That's the secret. That's the new method. That's what I've learned and that's what I created. That's what I've done to make sure that my loops stays upright for as long as possible. So remember, when I make my snares, it's, it's a combination of many things. It's about the cheapest, the quickest, but the most effective snare. That means everything from the cage to the loops. It has to last a long time. It has to work very well and it has to be up to par. That's what my snares are all about. And that's why I do things the way I do. So when it comes to these dragonfly, the secret is once you come down here, you have to bend that at a 90 degree before you put it onto your cage. Now, keep in mind, if you don't know how I got this other end crimped, you need to watch episode four. Got to go back and watch the episodes in order in order to get uh, fully understand everything. You got to watch episode one, two, three, four, five before you get to this episode to understand how to get the loops the way they are. OK, so remember that. So with this, let's continue on and let me show you guys again. So again. Stick it in. And if you need pliers to help you guide your line in, do so. Alright. Stick it into the sleeve. Get the sleeve as close to the cage as possible. Take the pliers, hold the loop line, take the dice, grab the outside of the sleeve, pull them apart, get the sleeve close to the cage as possible, crimp it down, make sure you cut off the loose ends, each loop will always have loose ends, you want to cut them off, if you don't cut off these little loose ends right here, see that, if you don't cut that off, your loop line is going to get stuck in there, you don't want that, you're going to lose crabs. So make sure you always snip as close as possible, but make sure you don't snip your other line either. I've done that a couple times. Trust me on that one. Man, snip here and on accident, don't pay attention. And I do it too far and I snip the other line. Got to do it all over again. So, see? Boom. Start. To the dragonfly. And so I'm gonna do the rest of the lines and then I'm gonna show you the final result, okay? So that's how you make a dragonfly snare right there take a look up close 
Okay, so keep in mind a couple things that in episode four, I show you how to cut the line, how long to cut the line. Everything stays the same. You always do two crimps on each sleeve to make sure that the sleeve holds on to the cage and doesn't fall off. So always crimp it down twice. Okay, um, and when it comes to the dragonfly, if you bend it 90 degrees, you, it should come out like this. See, looks like a dragonfly. All right. Now, the only thing that I'm not going to do in this video that I showed you in episode four is to epoxy it. Put glue, that Gorilla Glue, put it around the cages where the sleeve are attached. Glue that area, you know, let it coat. Make sure it's glued down to make sure your loops don't go anywhere. So between the Gorilla Glue and between you crimping it 90 degrees, I guarantee you your loops is going to stay vertical for a very, very long time. Okay, so that's the secret. So go ahead and try it out. When it comes to the vertical lines, you don't want them too big. It's too big, the weight is gonna make it crash and fall over. You wanna keep it at 12 inches. So I recommend if you wanna be safe with these dragon uh, fly loops, instead of cutting at 13 inch, like I did, cut it at 12 inch. So by the time you're done crimping it and put it on and snipping off the little pieces, it'll be an 11 inch loop. And that will make it last even longer. Okay, so those are some tips for you when it comes to the Dragonfly loops. So I'll take a look. That's beautiful. Now these, I love these designs. The Dragonfly, it works just as well as the Butterfly. Okay, so now that we have our dragonfly and ready to go, let's go ahead and do our stingray. In order to do the stingray loops, same thing. Make sure you watch episode four. Know how to cut your lines. Know how to crimp one in. And what you're going to do is stick it in. Stick your sleeve in. And just like the butterfly loops, you're going to bend it with the curve. Okay, and this time you're going to bend it roughly about an inch and a half rather than just an inch. So an uh, inch and a half in, you want to bend it, okay, and you're not going to pinch it, all right? So I want you to bend it, but I don't want you to pinch it because I want you to understand this is where you're going to wrap your uh, around your cage. But I don't want you to pinch it down. That's not, the, that's not what we want to do here. By pinching it down, it creates a less surface area. See, let me, up close, you see how big that surface area is when you don't pinch it down? But if you pinch it down... See how the surface area becomes less? You don't want that. You want a big surface area so that way when you put it onto your cage, it's going to flap around the way it's supposed to, okay? So, with that, once you do that, without pinching down, it curves a little bit still. See? That's all right. Don't pinch it, okay? Now, when it comes to the location of the loops, I put it all on the bottom tier, okay? So, take a look. So, top tier... bottom tier okay I'm gonna put all the loops on the bottom tier now keep in mind it's very important to know which way again which way is the heavier end and which side is the less heavier side because the way the loops go is very important so with this right here this is my heavier side this is my least heaviest side okay so this is my lighter side so that means that the leader line is going to come out this way so therefore this can shoot out now if i'm pulling imagine this is the leader line right here and i'm pulling this way that means i want my loops to face down like this so it can go like that so that means i want it to face this way rather than this way that's a big difference, okay? And when you do enough of these loops, you're going to see what the big difference is. So again, this is the lighter end, heavier end, pulling it this way. You want your snare facing down so it can pull easily, just like that, okay? You don't want it facing up, okay? Because now it goes like this. See how hard that is? See how rough that is? You don't want that. You want a smooth line. By putting it down, see how smooth that is? That's the difference, okay? So, with this, same thing. Use some pliers to help you guide through those maneuvers, through those between wires. Okay, and remember, you're not pressing down. You're not um, creasing any of the lines, okay? You're trying to leave it flexible, all right? And then stick it into your sleeve. Okay. 
okay and unlike my other loops you're not going to push the sleeve all the way in okay you're going to leave roughly about half an inch to three quarter of an inch yeah just like that right there see that so you want you don't want to push that sleeve all the way in you want to leave that much so that way It looks something like that. Let me see if I can get a good angle. See that? So it has room to flap around. And I'm going to show you why that's important uh, at the end of this. So once you get it there, and you see how, remember, this is my heavier side. Okay? This is my heavier side. So that means when I pull the uh, snare, it's going to go like this. See how smooth that is? Rather than if it's the other way. Facing up, it's not going to work as well. Smooth. Okay? So, let's put the rest on. We're done. Take a look. Okay. So this is how this snare works. When it's underwater, it's loose. The waves are blowing everything around. So the snares is going like this, jumping all around. It's going crazy under there, right? And when the crab come in to eat and it blows the snare around, it's going to blow it into their hand. They're going to get all tangled up, get their claws tangled up in it, and then boom. You pull your line, you snag the crab. That's how the stingray works. Okay? Now keep in mind, remember, this is the heavier end. This is the lighter end. So I'm going to pull it this way. So therefore, I need to make sure my snares are facing the correct directions. See that? It needs to face down. Okay, so get you an up close look. I'm gonna show you how it looks from the top view. So you see what I mean by placing your snare. See that? So this is the heavier end. So you're pulling it this way. So you want your loops to face down. Very important. And these loops on the corner. And in the middle, just like every other loop. The difference is this are all on the first tier. Okay, so you want it close to the ground as possible. Okay, so they're all on the first tier. And that's what you want. Okay. Now, I know the packaging looks different. Now, I know the packaging looks different because, you know, by the time it's done, put it here, loop, loop it in, take a rubber band, tie it up, okay? And that's why my snares look like this when, uh, when they go out. So. This is the Stingray loop. It works great. I love these loop styles. Let me tell you, if these loop styles didn't work, I wouldn't use them at all. But the Butterfly, the Dragonfly, and the Stingray, these are my top three loops to use anytime in any condition. You're guaranteed to catch something. Okay. In my next video, I'm going to throw another one out in the next couple weeks where it's going to show you three more different types of loop styles. Again, I have the Wasp. 
I have the windmill and I have the hybrid. So I have three more line styles, loop styles to show you guys. And I'm gonna throw that video out in a couple ways. Catch the video, I hope you like it. I hope you like this video. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, crabbing season is only a little bit over two weeks away. Um, it's about to be that time. So if you get a chance, take a look at my videos, watch my videos on how to make crab snares. Um, in the next couple days, I have another video coming out. I'm gonna show you a quick an easy way to make a crab snare. Like literally, anybody can go do it. Now, if you don't wanna go through all these steps that I went through and you wanna do your own steel, here's how you do it. So catch that next video. Until next time, peace out.